More with the baddest man of radio, Michael Bayesden. Just in case you missed it, here's another Michael Bayesden show rewind. If you're not used to black sanctified churches, you better have on a helmet and some shoulder pads. <laughs> because cause they'll bump into you. What? That, um, the white people are real calm with their, with their, with their spirituality, right? Uh, they don't shout. They just cry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord of the Lamb. Lord of what? Let me say Lord of the Lamb. Let me say that, the Father, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, George. That's the white church. And then show me the, uh, Here's the, black, the black church. Yes, <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Say it! <laughs> Speak the word now! Speak the word. No! Yes! Say it now! Has some lama lala some mana! That's another Michael Baisden show rewind. Yeah. <laughs> the folks are coming from the club and going straight to the church. Yeah. Mike Baisden and George Wilbon throwing down on Hump Day Wednesday. Getting ready to get this started. Come on. Pastor Michael Stevens in the house, University City Church. <laughs> the pastor's and still on. I know the price is going. Y'all are out of y'all's minds. How you doing, Pastor Michael? Uh, hey, Pastor. Hey, Mike, I'm doing fine, man. I'm glad to be back with you. So you all got to check out his book. It's Pastor Michael Stevens, University City Church in Charlotte. The name of the book is Pimps in the Pulpit. Why did you no, no. write this book? No, the name of the book is No More Excuses, Reaching African-American Men, Creating a Culture to Reach African-American Men. All right, I'm going to get that. Give me that book title again. No More Excuses. Write that creating down. A, yeah, Creating a Coach in the Church to Reach African-American Men, which, by the way, number one, is an issue dealing with money in the pulpit. So we got to address that issue. Why did you write this book? I wrote it because there's an absence of black men in the church right now. Right now, we are all over the Muslim scene, the Hindu scene, the Buddhist scene. But when it comes to the 430-some-odd year American history, we are at an anathema in the black church. What can we do to, to get more men in the church? I said game, recognize game, and sometimes men may not sure. be as comfortable with the pastors. Are you a, a pastor that men would be comfortable with? Absolutely. And, and, and the Bible says you tell the tree by the fruit it bears. You, you, you have these sensationalists and these wannabe uh, shock jock folk wanting to call you in and give these outrageous statistics, mm -hmm. which really, in my opinion, it, it harms the show. But I've done re research, statistical research that shows that hey, at the end of the day, men want to feel challenged. Men really want to mm -hmm. be in a culture where they can be a men. They don't have to check their masculinity at the door and be wimp, sissies, queers, uh, soft, you name it. They want to they wanna really be men in the local church. Yeah, and the way they can do that, man, is to feel like they have a voice. Because I think that most real men want to have a voice uh, more than just sitting in the congregation and being preached to all day. And unfortunately for a lot of men, they feel like they're being attacked in the church. And sure, not being sure. heard. Because, you know, we got issues, too. And many times, just like anybody else is trying to pander to their biggest audience, it's all on the men to get their stuff together. And nobody's telling the women, hey, maybe it could be you, too. Right. Mike, I was really impressed with what you said earlier about creating an atmosphere where men can talk in the church. You talked about, you know, can people ask questions in the pulpit? You know, yeah. well, there's an order and a way to do things. Obviously, sure. on Sunday morning, with the limited time you have, that's not the deal. But right. that's where the value of social media comes in. Facebook, MySpace, blogging. We create a culture at the University City Church in Charlotte where people can talk back. They can ask questions, and we can handle difficult matters and do it from a biblical perspective. All right, I got a question for Pastor Michael Stevens when we come back. Uh-oh. If you all know... Yeah, I'm getting ready to do it. If you all have an issue in your church with your pastor, I want you all to call in, and I'm going to find out from Pastor Michael Stevens if he did something he wasn't supposed to do, does he expect to be turned in by the congregation? What to do if your pastor's getting his freak and his pimp on in your church? It's the Michael Bazin Show. That. How can you do that every Sunday? That's take a lot of audacity, George. Yes, it does. You're standing up in church. Your women in the congregation sitting there listening to you talk and giving other people advice. And you know you, the story the other day. Pastor got the woman pregnant and then married the couple. Mm. That is cold-blooded right That's there. That's pure evil. There's some mess going on in the church, uh, Pastor Michael. It's given a bad name for all the really good pastors. So... If a person found out, let me just ask Tony this question since I got him on hold. Tony's calling from D.C. Say hello to Pastor Michael Stevens and George Wilborn. What's going on, fellas? What's happening? Hey, Tony. So what happened, Tony? 
Uh, I mean, when I go to, I went back to church, man. I was gone out of church for a couple of years, and I went back, and I'm hearing more about receiving money than the God. Give me an example. Example, money, money, money. <laughs> I got an example. <laughs> example is emphasizing if you pray, give yeah. your money, and your prayers will get answered. If 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 you live, if you're going through hard times, give your money, and your hard times will be easy. Can I ask you a question, Tone? And to you too, George. Would you step to your past if you had a problem with him, Tone? Say that one more time. Would you step to your pastor, man to man, and say, look, I need to talk to you. I got a problem with this or that. Are you comfortable enough to do that? Yeah. Really? Yeah, my girl holds, my girlfriend holds me back from doing that. See, I, I would too. But see, I believe that you, you have to hold your pastors accountable for whatever the teachings are. If you're following those teachings, then... And you have to do that. And any good pastor would welcome that. From what I understand, Pastor Michael Stevens, a lot of men can't reach the pastor because you have to go through this gauntlet of people to get security. You got the the deacons. How easy is it for a guy to reach you? You know what, Mike? I'm all over social media. I spend at least 45 minutes after every service in our church. I have open office. We have what's called a We Care Pastoral Care Program at our church. And we're talking 1,500, 1,600 people uh, currently throughout the weekend. Right. But we're very accessible, very available. There is no gulf or gap between me and the men and women that I serve. I refuse to have that in our church. Yeah, I mean, George and I don't have security when we go out. I don't stand behind tables. I need to be able to have contact with people because nobody's after me. So I'm trying to understand what all this security is all about for the pastor. Well, sometimes it's sensationalism, and it's, a, it's, it's sad, but you know what, Mike? Let's, let's keep it real with this. There's always a bunch of bad apples that ruin it for everybody, and, and, and I, I really think it's a very, very small mm-hmm. share of pastors out there that have this type of mindset, and it makes it just bad for a lot of us that, that are, are not living like that. I don't know. I don't know if it's a small amount anymore, pastors. Getting, this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Pastor Michaels, are you married? I am married 17 years this month. Congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. It's got to be a challenge. Being the wife, you know what? I need to talk to the wives of the pastors. That's got to be one heck of a challenge to be the wife of the pastor of the church. It's got to be a Often challenge. the loneliest person. I'm not going to ask to speak to your wife about it today, but I certainly want to have her on at some point because that's got to be a challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, maybe yeah. not as much for your wife, but for the wives who know their husbands, their pastor husbands are creeping. That's got to be the most disrespected position to be in, sitting up there with all that pride, with you and them knowing what's going on. Pride and embarrassment. Oh, my it, God. If she knows it, then the other sisters and the all brothers the whole in the congregation church, probably absolutely. Knows. Well, again, as a researcher, I, I was a political science major at North Carolina A&T State University. Anytime I preach or do material, I write my books, even mm-hmm. my sermons, it's always backed with numbers. And I've got startling numbers on the pastor's wives, pastor's kids, I did it with depression, the loneliness, mm-hmm. all of the a- anxiety attacks. And you're right. She's the loneliest person in the church. Now, that my wife don't have that story, thankfully. But uh, for most pastor's wives, yeah, that's the truth. And it's a, they live in a fishbowl world. And uh, they can never please everybody all the time. Let's talk to him right now. Go check out. So, George, the pastor, we had Pastor Michael on. He yes. said that it was a very small percentage of pastors that he think is sleeping with the women in the congregation. Well, I told you 15, 20 percent. The, the other guy we had on said 90. I, I certainly didn't believe that. I said I'd like to think 15 to 20. I think it's a smaller number than we may think. Hmm. Let me ask my guest. Shannon Bellamy's in the house. How you doing, Shannon? Hi, Michael. How are you? Oh, you are in trouble. You are in so much trouble. I can handle it, though. George, when this woman tells you her story, it's going to make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. I'm that ready. is right. That's right. I wrote a book called Pimps in the Pulpit. You can find it at ShannonBellamy.com. And on September 27th, we're going to have a relief on the Mooshaloo. I'm talking about my pastor, he used the Bible to justify what it is that he was doing. He would tell me, and see, because I wasn't reading the Bible for myself, mm-hmm. I fell for it. He told me the story of David and how he asked God for me <laughs> and that God would allow it. He wouldn't condone it, but he would allow it. He told me he had two phenomenal women because he could. He said that he would still marry me and my next husband and still lay with me if he could, if he wanted to. Mm-mm-mm. This was continual, two and a half years. And they just so bad when you walk into his office, he has a doctorate of divinity on his wall. But come to find out, he don't even have a bachelor's. But he's the number one pastor of a church of 7,000 people. Don't mention the name, please. 
I'm not going to mention his name. Oh, no, I'm not going to put him out there like that. He knows who he is, and he's listening. Wow. What, what state? Philadelphia. And it's serious because it's, I just spoke to someone recently, and, they, and I mentioned his name. They said, oh, girl, he's such a flirt. That is the wrong adjective for your pastor. He's a flirt. And thank Absolutely. you for giving the city when George asked for the state. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, see George, 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 George trying to be slick. <laughs> it's all good. No, George be like, so what block is that on? You know. I'm not gonna tell you the block, but listen, they know. Trust me, they shaking in their boots. Oh, they really know now. <laughs> Oh yeah, they know, but it's all good because I'm not I'm not hiding anything. No, you shouldn't. You haven't done anything wrong. You shouldn't feel bad. So, even so Shannon, <clears throat> Shannon, you agree with me that you have so many women that are vulnerable coming into the church, and many now we know that a lot of pastors give them good counseling or refer them to good counseling. Mm-hmm. But what are the other pastors doing? But you know what? Just like he got me, he got me on my vulnerability when I was at a really bad time. He told me this was good for him, good for me, that, you know, he was good for me, that, you know, God would allow it. Oh, he prayed on it. Then when I I had a really bad situation, he came to help me move, to pack some boxes. Next thing you know, I'm laying on the floor. Somebody ring my doorbell. My my T-shirt is Monica Lewinsky. And then I report him to the Wait a minute. The past is not using a protection? Oh, you, no. That's two and a half years worth, too. No, never. But never. And you gave him a Lewinsky? Uh, well, George, well, you know what? Hold on a second. Hold on. All right, all right. Uh, Shannon, I got to teach you how to work with George. See, George has set us up. He set us all up. Didn't I just announce today that President Obama just elected uh, Clyborne's daughter as an FCC commissioner? I love you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Chico DeBarge. You're not used to black sanctified churches. You better have on a helmet and some shoulder pads. Because they'll bump into you. What? That I mean, white people are real calm with their with their with their oh, spirituality, right? They don't shout, they just cry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord of the Lamb. Lord of what? Let me say Lord of the Lamb. Let me say that the Father, hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, George. That's the white church. And then show me the uh Here's the black, the black church. church. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Say it! <laughs> Speak the word now! Speak the word. La! Yes! Say it now! Has him lama lala samana! Side ride. The music you want to hear. Jazz, R&B, neo soul, just for you, exclusively on the Michael Bayston show.